Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I was looking through my videos, especially in the uh, analysis area of my YouTube channel, and I've recently noticed that you guys are sure loving my Smash content. I went through, I figured out what I have done for Smash and what I haven't done, and one thing that I noticed that I haven't done yet is basically show you how to get a GameCube controller working with Dolphin. And you think it would be that hard to do, but it's really not. And you don't have to take any shortcuts like I had to do with when first when Smash came out because of the fact that Nintendo made so many, or not so many, they made very limited amount of the converter adapters for the Wii U. I had to go with this particular solution, so this video won't be focused around showing you guys how to go get a USB GameCube controller because usually those kind of devices are very poor quality. This video is going to be basically evolving around getting an official controller because I find any kind of knockoff controllers, they're usually not built very good. They're very basically light. The analog sticks don't work the way they should. L and R don't feel the way they should. I want to get an official controller working with Dolphin. And the best way of doing it is getting those converter boxes that Nintendo launched to the public. Fortunately, I don't have one, but I have something better than what they actually launched. So what I have here guys is a basically a box that converts basically your ports for your GameCube over to basically a USB. Now the reason why I made that long intro about how I'm glad I went with a third party knockoff versus the real thing which I made a huge rant about going with the real deal GameCube controller but what I can tell you the reason why you should go with a third party adapter not Nintendo's is because the third party have PC and Wii U mode. Uh, the Wii U uses a special driver that this thing must have to communicate to the Wii U, but because it's a basically a driver set that Nintendo demands for this to work with, the PCs do not have that special driver. So what ends up happening is that if you plug an official one in from Nintendo without the flip switch, what ends up happening is that this thing just doesn't know what to do with Windows. Now there is ways around it and I will be bringing videos out that shows you how to get this thing working in Wii U mode because there is one huge benefit of doing that and the one big benefit of getting this thing to work in Wii U mode is that Rumble does support only in Wii U mode. If you try to launch in PC mode through Dolphin, you don't have any Rumble whatsoever. But again, do it in Wii U, you will. So that video will be coming in the next few videos to come on this. but. So what you guys are going to have to do to be able to get this device going, uh, you're going to have to basically figure out which port is player 1 to 4. Now, luckily this company does put little indicators at the top, 4 dots, 3 dots, 2 dots, and so on and so on. So take your GameCube controller, stick it in port 1. Once the device has been plugged into your computer, open up Dolphin Emulator. So once Dolphin is opened up, you're going to head into controllers. You're going to go to port 1. So this is what the software is going to recognize as player 1, player 2, player 3, player 4. And you're going to go to controller settings and you're going to basically say it's a standard controller. Now if you manage to get the device to run in Wii U mode, Dolphin will recognize it as the GameCube adapter for Wii U. And if you can manage to get this one to work, which we'll show you later how to do from us on the channel, um, basically, um, it will configure itself for you, but in this particular situation, you're going to have to configure the controller. Now come up over to devices, and this is where you're going to basically pick the device that you want to configure. Now the reason why it's set like this, because you can configure keyboards, you can configure Xbox controllers, and you can even configure, uh, the device that we've plugged in. Now because the device has four ports on it, you basically can see all four ports here on based upon each controller that's plugged in. So you could literally configure four different controllers if somebody doesn't like the GameCube configuration. So because we're plugged into port one, it's port zero. So you're gonna come down here and you're going to configure the buttons to what buttons you want to wear. So for me, I'm gonna just gonna configure A to A, B to B, X to X, Z to Z and so on. So based on clicking pretty much every single button you can see that um, the controller is 100% configured. 
C or the, I mean the control stick is basically working in every direction because it is configured correct based upon this. C stick is the same. Uh, D pad is the same. The only really ones that you need to make sure that is 100% bang on is the control sticks. You want to make sure that they're almost dead center in the middle. And the reason I say that is because there's a dead zone dead center in the middle. Meaning that if the controller is pulling just a little bit to whatever direction based upon where I'm putting my uh, mouse cursor, the game will send them in that direction. So if they hit dead center in the middle, the game won't register any movement. But if it's slightly over, the game will register movement and head in that direction. So if it's in a case of a situation where the controller is a little bit over, set a dead zone to wherever it actually manages to hit that little dot. Now for your triggers, this is where you may have to configure them a little bit as well. Because the GameCube controller uses analog buttons with digitalized buttons, so when you basically fully click down, you hear a little tiny pop. That pop is the digitalized button taking effect. So I'm right up against the digitalized button, and if I click in fully now, you can see that the game is recognizing it as a fully on. So right up against it, fully on. So we can see that this controller is configured pretty close to correct. So we don't have to touch that. But if you notice that if you're basically kind of on the button and it's fully on, configurate the threshold buttons a little bit higher so it does activate at the right point. Really guys, that's all you need to really do to set up a GameCube controller or even an Xbox controller if you really wanted to. The only issues that I've had with this method is that you can't get Rumble to work. According to Rumble, it's set to my Xbox controller, but for some reason, like I said when I started this video, uh, the PC mode will not enable Rumble on this. For some reason, Windows can't detect a rumble pack even if a controller is plugged into every single port. So unfortunately, this just will not enable rumble. If you want rumble, you're going to have to download the Wii U driver set for Wii U mode and then basically the, the GameCube box for Wii U settings will take over and you will be able to. Then you don't have to configure any of these settings because Dolphin will know exactly what you're using. Now for me, I set up a save profile here, so I'm going to hit the save. So if I ever need to basically load this profile onto any other port with the standard controller configuration, I don't have to sit there and reset up every single one of them every single time. So like again, you can use the Wii U game adapter for Wii U if you manage to get the Wii U mode working. If you guys want to learn on how to do that, I'll give you guys a link down in the description box below to a video that will outline how to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video for today and we'll see you guys in the next one.